two, one, and go. Welcome to Vegas here on ESPN Radio. Jeff Birnbaum alongside Jack and Drew. The NBA Summer League is in full effect, and what's you guys' take on it? How's it been so far? I'd say probably the most standout player that I've seen has been the Cavs' second-round draft pick, Imoni Bates. He was projected uh, coming into college to be a first-round pick. A uh, lot of Kevin Durant comps, uh, just based on his shooting ability and his shot-making ability. But he fell uh, pretty far. He trans- he ended up transferring to Eastern Michigan at, at one point. And so he fell to the 49th pick, and he's just been lighting it up for the Cavs. And he might end up being their answer this season at the three spot. That was so weak, and part of the main reason why they got knocked out in the first round to uh, objectively a weaker Knicks team. Mm-hmm, I agree, but a player that not many people understand, he's been actually playing a lot better as of recent. His first game, Brandon Miller, had committed around not seven-ish fouls. He had and, six within like the first half. Yeah, and after that, he put out, in the second half of that game, he went on to score 18 points, and then in the other games, the most recent game actually, he had 26 points, six rebounds, and two assists, and I think he's pro- he's trying to prove that he can be better than Scoot Henderson. And the Charlotte Hornets took the right pick. What about Victor Wembanyama? 27 points in his second summer league game. He's done for the entire tournament. What do we see from uh, him? There's no reason to keep him going. I think he'll be okay. He just needed a sec. He just needed to adjust to the to the differences between the game. The French. Uh, the French league is pl- the the way they pl- the teams play is so different from the NBA. The NBA is such a different animal when it comes to running an offensive set and stuff like that. And he also is facing off against more physical, or I mean, not more physical in terms of how they play, but just bigger, stronger, faster players. So he needed a couple a couple games to adjust to that. But there's really no reason to risk an injury to what people are saying is the the greatest prospect since LeBron. Mm, I would agree. Yeah, because. I mean, for a guy like Wembenyama, his height and his length, uh, there's no after what the game, the second game you just had, there was no reason for him to keep playing. I mean, summer league doesn't really matter. I think it's really all about what happens in the regular season, and if they don't want to let him, if they don't want him to get injured in summer league, I would say it's it was a smart decision to let him rest the rest of the summer. Yeah. Did we see a glimpse of what's to come in San Antonio? I think we did in that second game. But I also wanted to look at some of the second-year players. Uh, Chet Holmgren, especially, I mean, I guess if you want to call him a second-year player, but he's not played NBA basketball outside of the summer league so far. He's been really tearing it up. He's put on a lot of muscle in the offseason, which is really what a lot of people were saying that he needed to do uh, just because of his how thin he was, and that's part of the reason he got injured. Um, but I think that Chet is really – going to pair well with uh, Jalen Williams in Oklahoma City, who's bulked up over the offseason, too. And they're going to be a really dominant front court duo uh, with Shea, feeding them the ball. Another second-year player that not many people want to talk about is Dalen Terry for the Chicago Bulls. He didn't play that much last season, but he's been lighting it up in Summer League this year, having one of the best three three point percentages in, this, in the entire Summer League. And the Bulls are 2-1 and one in the Summer League, and Dalen Terry is a big part of it. And Oklahoma City Western Conference play in last year. Do they make the playoffs with a healthy A 100%. I think they do, yeah. Yeah, I think they're probably looking at... I mean, obviously the West, like top to bottom, is really tight at this point. I think even the Spurs, who a lot of people consider the worst team um, in the league by like a wide margin, are... I mean, now with London Yama, and then they've got... Uh, Kel Johnson, and they, they've got a really good young core. They're in the running if, if everything falls into place. I know we've got a question. Uh, hi. Uh, so we've seen Keegan Murray and Jabari Smith Jr. just absolutely go crazy in the summer league. Do you guys think that they deserve to be in there, or do you think they should just be respected as like one of the players just on the team? I think even though both, uh, Keegan, Keegan Murray especially, he started games for the play or playoff team, the three seed in the West. He started playoff games for them, so he's obviously a respected player in the organization. He's a very good player, but his role in that team was more of a spot up shooter. He sat in the corner a lot. He did hit a lot of threes, and he was very good. But they see more from him, and I think it's more of a sign of respect that they're willing to let him play in the summer league and develop his skill set. And as for Jabari Smith Jr., I think the Rockets really just need more development in their players. They're trying to get rid of that AAU-style 
just like one player with the rock, the whole possession kind of basketball. And there's still parts of his game he needs to improve on. So I think it's a good thing that they're both playing. Yeah, I would agree. Jabari Smith wasn't really that good last year. And I would say this is kind of like a prove-it year for him or else that might that could go down as a really bad pick for Houston. And that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for joining us here on ESPN Radio.